Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful that you are here watching my video. Thank you for your support. It's been two weeks since the last time I posted video. I plan to be consistent to share video at least once a week. But I just can't make it since we have through many things during the last two weeks. Especially because of the weather starting to be cold these days, I and my husband were not feel very well. We had flu and cough. We are so grateful that we are getting better now. In this video, I and my husband are working in the yard to make it neat and clean. And I would like to share a particular part from the book that we are currently studying with my friends. It's been almost three months we study from the book Lies Woman Believe. Every one of us read on this book personally and then studying and discussing together through the study guidebook. In the light of the word of God, it helps us to dig down our hearts and find out what lies we unconsciously believe. Even though we thought we don't believe, but how we live reveals more than what we say we believe intellectually. The lies put us into bondage, but the truth gives us freedom. Freedom from the bondage of sin, freedom from guilty, and freedom from fear. Our society is conditioned to think that we should not have to live with problems that every problem must be fixed. From this way of thinking, it's an easy jump to the so-called gospel of prosperity. It's so tempting for us to believe we can just pray and believe in God, and presto, all our problems will vanish. No wonder so many Christian women are angry, resentful, and frustrated. They thought that if they accepted Jesus and went to church and tried to live a good Christian life, they wouldn't have all these problems. No wonder they feel deceived. They were deceived, but not by God. Living an obedient life does spare us from many problems that are the natural consequences of a life lived apart from God and His ways. But that doesn't mean that those who follow Christ will be exempt from problems. The truth is, life is hard. We live in a fallen world. Even those who have been redeemed live in earthly bodies and have to deal with the realities of temptation, sin, disease, loss, pain, and death. Being a Christian, even a major believer, does not wrap us up in some sort of celestial cocoon where we are immune to pain. Not until God makes a new heaven and new earth will we be totally free from the ravage of sin. Until then, there will be tears, sorrows, pressures, and problems. But and here's the good news. God is not removed or detached from our problems. He doesn't just sit up in heaven and watch to see if we will manage to survive. No, the God of the Bible is a very present help in trouble. That doesn't mean he waves a magic wand and makes all our problems disappear. But it does mean he uses pressures and problems to mold and save our lives and to make us like his son Jesus, who learned obedience through what he suffered. And through it all, his presence provides the comfort, strength, and tailor-made grace we need to endure. No one really wants to have to deal with suffering and heritage. But our wise, loving Heavenly Father says, I have a good, beautiful purpose in all of this. 
I want to use your pain and your problems to change you and to reveal my grace and power to the world. When our focus is fixed on our circumstances, our problems, other people, or ourselves, God will seem to be small in comparison, distant or not there at all. But when we lift up our eyes, though they may be filled with tears and behold Him, the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. That's the truth that sets us free.